What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming bringing you an amazing video today. We are playing Lord of the Rings Rise to War and it is the new year. Welcome to the new year. We are talking about a fantastic combat report and actually I'll be doing a video series for the next, uh, I'd say, one or two days a week. I'll be covering very detailed reviews of combat reports like this one here. In this particular report, we're looking at a Tier 1 Haldir versus a Tier 2 Kamul. We're looking at who won, why they won, and room for improvement on both sides, okay? So we're going to call this Randy's Deep Dives Episode 01. All right. Uh, and I'm just killing some Danes on my other screen here. Don't mind me if you see me. Hello. Just killing things on my other screen. Don't mind me. Uh, I'm multitasking, okay? So in this report, we've got a Haldir here. Haldir has a fantastic weapon with the increased range damage as well as some speed to elves. He's got a chest with uh, reduced focus damage received, which also gives his commander amazing stats. This is one of the higher stat-giving uh, pieces of chest for your commander. He's got a hood that is going to give you guaranteed madness. This is one of the strongest uh, headpieces in the game, this one, and then there's also the Bone Mask version. They both give a guaranteed against one enemy on round one, then every two rounds after that. Uh, chance to inflict madness super strong and I really love it okay other than that we've got this belt here which is fantastic gives you a 25% chance of receiving 15% reduced damage that actually calcs out to uh, I don't know three uh, 3.75 percent damage reduction um, when you average it out one out of four ratio I would say it's a decent one because it does give you good speed to your range. So between the belt and the weapon, we've got 35 speed to your ranged units, okay? Uh, all right. So he's got these fantastic sentinels, which are going to be super fast, plus 35 speed there, plus another 8 speed from his talents. So they're at 114 speed, which is faster than some cavalry, okay? These guys are ninjas. They're also going to dodge the first attack, so pay attention to that. That'll help counter the alchemist build he's fighting. Then he's got some bow knights here, which are going to, again, have enormous speed boost here. Plus 46 speed overall. Insane. Okay. Uh, and their damage is also going to get some nice bonuses as well, right? Okay. And then we've got his tanks, the cataphracts. Okay. These are extremely tanky units. Uh, they're great to have as your front line because they take reduced damage from melee. This mitigates damage from alchemists and any, any even any non-physical damage as long as they're melee. This will mitigate the melee damage received. Combined with an additional 10% damage reduction as well, this will affect all damage received as well. So basically, if you're fighting Alchemists, which in this case he is, it's a total of 25% reduced damage taken from the Alchemists, which is enormous, okay? As far as the skills here, we've definitely got uh, Galadrim here maxed out, which is a great physical damage boost uh, modified by your speed. So I'm going to be really interested to see what that calcs out at with the 251 speed he's got. We've got Fortify for some physical defense when defending, and then Shield Training for additional damage uh, reduction received, okay? He's got a few points in Sylvian Elf, which is going to give you a fantastic poison damage uh, application. I would just max this out. I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I see things at 13 out of 15, and it really triggers my OCD. It really bothers me a lot. So I would max that out uh, personally, but that's okay. All right, uh, I'm actually going to just give me two seconds here. My alerts is fighting that Dane, like I said. Uh, what I like to do is not die. Okay, we're good. I killed the Dane. Dane's down. We'll cover that report tomorrow, okay? All right, uh, forest, forest Agility. This has a fantastic chance for your range units to attack twice per round. I would probably, like I said, focus on maxing Sylvan Elf and the Forest Agility out because that is both... Uh, it's going to affect your damage output, and you know me, damage is king. I would probably drop one point from the shield training and one point from fortify or something like that uh, to give myself maxed out uh, Sylvan Elf and then put another point in Force Agility, okay? 15 out of 15 in the guide, which is going to give you enormous damage bonus for the first two rounds. So I would say combine guide with Force Agility, give yourself the maximum damage output in the first two rounds, give yourself that higher percent chance to do a double strike, you, uh, you won't regret it. And then March Warden of uh, Lorien, he's got one point in here, which is going to give one of his units every uh, two round cooldown here the chance to avoid uh, the next damage received, okay? So, 
that combined with the Sentinel's avoidance already from swiftness, he's going to have a decent amount of avoidance abilities, okay? Kamul's build. Let's take a look at that. Very nice. He's got the Carver here to give himself an additional focus damage proc. He's actually running a focus damage build. I like this. Man after my own heart. He's got... Uh, I'm really excited to see this, actually. I'm upset that the, that the build lost. We'll talk about that in a second. But I'm excited to see this focus and poison damage build here. He's got Shadow of the East maxed out. He's got Dreadful Presence, uh, 5 out of 7. I would actually... Uh, max out this poison damage because this is unavoidable and it's higher damage output. So what I would do is have one point in Dreadful Presence and flip-flop it, put five points in poison damage for higher poison damage because, like I said, this is unavoidable. Okay, so little minor min-max tweaks there. Um, second in command is amazing. I support you 100%. Anticipation is amazing. I support you 100%. It's going to give you great avoidance, Okay. And then here we have the Ring Wraith maxed out as well, which is going to give you fantastic increased burn poison and focus damage to your enemies. Nazgul Screech is a guaranteed stun plus a nuke. And then we've got the Morgul Poison, which is going to do some fantastic poison damage. Um, so as far as leveling this build further, if you're getting higher respect levels, I would, like I said, try and max out this poison damage. It is one of the biggest damage dealing abilities he's got. You could easily see this ticking for 4 to 6k once it's maxed out. Uh, okay, gear-wise, he's got the Carver for the additional instance of smite damage there, plus some good focus. He's got the chest piece here, very similar, same exact chest piece actually, I believe, or, or very similar chest piece with the stats on it. Okay, he's got another, he's got the alternative, instead of the, the ranged hood, he's got the bone mask which is the alternative uh, Madness Helmet, so they're both going to be maddening each other. Then we got the Palantir of Orthanc, which is going to give you plus attack, as well as Fantastic Might and Focus, and uh, plus damage dealt to your melee, okay? Unit-wise, we've got Corsairs in here. How many Corsairs? I don't know. He's got 2,100 Corsairs. Uh, they're going to deal decent damage, okay? But they're really going to be dealing about 40 to 60 percent of what the alchemist damage output is going to be so uh slight lessons learned on this particular build what i would do is probably drop this corsair number down to around 800 to a thousand and put that 800 uh to 1200 whatever troop difference into the alchemist get these guys up around 5500 for this build and put the rest of the, uh, like I said, 800 to 1,000 Corsairs. They do serve a purpose. They are going to absorb some damage received. But at the same time, having 2,100 of them is really going to hinder your damage output. So, I'm actually extremely surprised that Kamul's damage output was so abysmal. Uh, this must have ended within a round or two. Well, you know, must have ended within a few rounds. Because um, with that damage build he's got, he should be doing pretty good DPS, especially with the gear and the 337 focus he's got. That's enormous focus. He should be dominating with his Kamul damage. So let's take a look at why that didn't happen. All right. And by the way, if you are enjoying these more detailed reviews, uh, please give me the like and sub and put a comment down there that says, I like it, Randy, because um, if I get some good feedback, I'll keep them going. Typically, I try and keep my videos, like I've said before, under six or seven minutes, because once you go over that mark, uh, statistically, my viewers drop off from, uh, I lose like 99% of my viewers after about seven minutes, so. If you're still here, I love you a long time. All right. Uh, but, oh, yeah, so as far as unit counters, right, the Bow Knights are going to hard counter the Taunt Trolls, so you'll probably see the Taunt Trolls get melted. I'm guessing that uh, Haldir ended up putting Madness on either the Corsairs or the Alchemists, and they did some self-damage because it was such a lopsided fight. Um, and these Sentinels must have really just shredded him, so I'm really excited to see the damage output from the Sentinels. Alright. And keep in mind, the Sentinels are massively fast, so they will attack before the Alchemists, uh, unless they're stunned by the Nazgul Screech. Going into round one. Okay. The Taunt Troll did not affect the Bonite Sentinels or Cataphracts. Okay. Taunt Trolls were maddened. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, we activated poison damage on the Cataphract. Sentinels were affected by Madness. So really, it's going well for Kamul so far. He resisted, or the Madness one on the Taunt Trolls, which no one cares about. And then he maddened the enemy's heaviest damage dealer, the Sentinels. Kamul attacked first. We dropped some Morgul Poison. We dropped some Smites in there. There's the Poison ticking for not very much. Uh, he's only got one point in there. The Bow Knights hitting the Mountain Trolls for 15,000 damage there. Just melting them with that damage bonus. Very nice. Okay. Now, the question is, who did we stun? Oh, yes, because Haldir gives the ability once in the first two rounds. When you have that 45% damage increase, you are immune to stun. So he did counter the Nazgul Screech with that. The Sentinels, even though they're maddened, resisted madness, and punched the Taunt Trolls for 20,400 damage, ladies and gentlemen. That is fantastic. Uh, it looks like we did trigger a double attack, which attacked your ally. Okay, so 24k damage to the enemy, 24k damage to uh, the ally. There's the Corsairs hitting the Cataphracts, the Alchemists hitting the Cataphracts. So he had some good damage output, but he got a terrible roll on the Alchemist here. Absolutely terrible roll on the Alchemists. A good roll would have been up in like the 40k damage range. Alright, uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay. Just looking. I'm just, I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, here comes the Bow Knights still attacking the Taunt Trolls. 15,000 damage there. There's Kamula's Nazgul Screech ticking for 6k on the Cataphracts. There's the Poison Damage ticking for 1k. Like I said, you max that Poison Damage out. And you could see that dealing anywhere from uh, 4 to 6k damage a turn. Really, really nice. Okay, here comes the Cataphracts, uh, but the Kamula's Anticipation caused them to avoid attacks from the Cataphracts. The Alchemists, oh my god, what a terrible damage roll again. What, they roll like a 1? Oh, no, no. <laughs> they just killed the Cataphracts. Okay, Cataphracts are dead. Cataphracts are dead. Corsairs and Alchemists killed the Cataphracts. This is honestly going really well. Uh, this is going extremely well for Kamul. I just don't understand what happened. I guess we'll find out here. Uh, Alchemist avoidance is now gone. So it lasted until round three. They avoided four attacks with the Alchemists. Sentinels are now afflicted by madness. I mean, what else do you want? Bow damage and sentinel damage decrease. Not by much, though. Okay, the Sentinels resisted Madness and punched the Alchemists for 20k damage. That's that's part of it. Oh, the Corsairs attacked their own Alchemists for 9k damage. So, there is uh, 27,800 damage output there to the Alchemists. Poor guys. We attacked the Bone Knights for 16k. He's really getting some pretty, pretty gross rolls on his damage on the Alchemists here, guys. Okay. Really not very good rolls for the Alchemists' damage. 3k alchemist only dealing 16k damage that's pretty sad especially when he's got the double damage right there okay all right shadow of the east this shadow of the east for 3k right there on the bonites okay bonites punching the alchemists and the corsairs we got a good bonite double attack here See, this is what I'm saying. Max out that double attack ability because it's really, really worth its weight in gold. There's the Sentinels killing the Corsairs. There's a half-decent Alchemist roll, finally. Holy cow. What a... Oh, my goodness. So we're really getting a lot of damage output. What is... What is happening? The Alchemists are now maddened. Maybe this is the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end if the Alchemists attack. Oh, they did. The Alchemists killed the Corsairs. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Kamul was kind of winning up until round five, believe it or not. In round five, the Helmet's Hysteria afflicted the Alchemists with Madness. The Alchemists, instead of dealing 20 to 30k damage to the enemy and killing all the Sentinels, they dealt 22,350 damage to the Corsairs and killed all the Corsairs. So round five was the turning point. It really went pretty well for Kamul leading up to this point. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately, the Alchemist, uh, you know, that Madness Helm is no joke. Oh yeah, the Sentinels are now going to be 
Now gonna get avoidance. They're probably gonna avoid the alchemist attack because there's no Corsairs or Trolls left. Unless Kamul hits them. Kamul did hit the Sentinels. Thank God for that. So the alchemist should punch through to somebody. Okay, the alchemist had a miserable damage roll. Probably like a one or a two. How disgusting. How disgusting is that? So, all right, so this was a combination of a couple things, ladies and gents. First of all, we had three out of the first four rounds had completely disastrous damage rolls for the Alchemists. In the round four, we had a great roll for the Alchemists. Uh, they got some good damage out. And then round five, the Alchemists had a good roll, <laughs> but they killed their own Corsairs. And now in round six, with a chance to turn the tide back, we had a ter terrible damage roll there. And here is round seven, some more, some more hysteria. The Alchemists got some damage output on the Bonites, but there are really not many Alchemists left. Okay, well look, that's the story of the fight. You get the picture. Kamul was actually probably winning that, although his damage output was really, really poor. I think the important thing to note uh, for Kamul's improvement um, for Rob here is Kamul really needs to max out the poison damage. That's one of his biggest damage dealers. Max this out. It pa bypasses avoidance, and it ticks every single round. Max this out. Dreadful Presence does a lot of damage, too. Um, I can understand why he's got his points in here, and I wouldn't take points out of Screech or Anticipation, but I would probably take out the Morgul Poison and drop that point into Dreadful Presence or Poison Damage. Uh, once you have Poison Damage at 7 out of 7, I would start putting points into Dreadful Presence. Dreadful Presence actually does pretty good damage because it does hit three targets on a two-round cooldown, um, whereas this hits one target for two rounds with a very small amount of damage. Okay, so drop the Morgul Poison point, Rob. Put that and these five points. Uh, leave one point in Dreadful Presence, but put those five points that you're taking into Poison Damage. Have that 6 out of 7. Have one out of seven in Dreadful Presence. Um, Gear-wise, you just got RNG into the ground. Honestly, you should have done better. You should have had fantastic damage output from the Alchemist in one of the first couple rounds. And because you had terrible damage rolls in the first couple rounds, it really hindered your performance later in the fight. The enemy had a lot more troops alive than he should have had alive. And Haldir got... Um, this 17.1% chance of attacking twice triggered several times um, against the odds. He got better than better than noted here performance from Forced Agility, so that's why I'm recommending definitely move this to 7 out of 7. And then uh, the Sylvan Elf. This is, I mean, Haldir's own damage output, right? Wasn't super great, I mean... At least put it at 14 out of 14, that way you can max out the, uh, oops, I keep clicking the wrong thing. At least get this to 14 out of 14, that way you can put 7 out of 7 in Force Agility, okay? Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing it 15 out of 15 just for my OCD, plus you get double the damage output from it. I'm not sure how much I was ticking for, let's see, the Sylvan Elf. What was the Sylvan Elf ticking for, because we're talking about doubling it, right? Doubling the poison damage part. Sylvan Elf, okay, so about... 2,000 damage around on the Mountain Trolls. What did it look like on round, like, uh, round three? So Sylvan Elf was dodged by the Alchemist, the first trigger, and the second trigger hit. So about 1,800 damage, we can assume, on round three, if that first one had landed. 2,000 damage in round one, so slowly decreasing as the troops decreased. So yeah, I would say it's probably worth putting more points in here because you could see yourself dealing, instead of 2,000 damage output, once you max this out, maybe it's 2,500 uh, damage output per round, plus the poison would tick an additional time, so it really puts you up to about 3,750 damage per round. I'm just giving you nice round ROM numbers, okay? Um, but if you can deal, if you can increase your damage output to 3,500 to 4,000, somewhere in that range per round up from the 2,000, 1,800 to 2,000, that's pretty significant. And that makes it worth using. Over 10 rounds, that's 45,000 damage, right? 35,000 <laughs> I can't do math. That's 35 to 40,000 damage over 10 rounds, 
which will significantly increase your damage output for Haldir. Because by round 5, you have dealt 25,000 damage, which is like killing five or 600 troops uh, for infantry types or what, you know, whatever you're killing. I'm just shooting from the hip. Uh, really interesting. Okay, and then we've got... Uh, this is nice. I like, I like the speed. I mean, that's it. There's not a whole lot else to say, ladies and gents. This was a good combat review. I'm glad to see the report. Uh, I think with a few tweaks and then a little bit of better RNG, I think Rob should have won this fight, honestly. But uh, you know what? That's why Madness is so much fun, because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen, if it's going to even work or not. But at least you know if you have the Trapper's Hood or the uh, Bone Mask, you know that you're going to get a guaranteed tri uh, trigger every two rounds with Hysteria, okay? And obviously, in this fight, it was absolutely game-breaking. Okay, so that's the video. Like and sub. Let me know if you like more of these long, detailed uh, reviews. I love you guys a long time. Randy out.